Hey guys, and welcome to another Minish video. I've been receiving a lot of questions, mostly from PCG players, asking that I go over team composition. As many of you know, I'm the most appreciated PCG streamer, and everybody universally loves me and my battling style. In fact, Jonas himself practically begged me to release this video, and I wanted to do it right, so I worked really hard mentally preparing myself to eventually start that process. Before I begin, I'd like to put your minds at ease. I've hit rank 8 on the Pokemon Sword and Shield doubles ladder, and although I recently started learning singles, I've had commercial success there this past year, hitting rank 78 in Pokemon on MMO's random tier, as well as rank 23 in the never used tier, and a less important rank 1 in PCG itself. To put this in perspective, my friend Casual QT, who has been the definitive rank 1 for two seasons, has never cracked the top 80 in randoms tier. And you know why that is? Well, it's because it's fucking randoms tier, and it doesn't serve as a definitive measure of skill. At no point should you ever discount the opinions of others despite your standing, but two points do form a line, and multiple lines do form a pattern, and although I'm sure by the end of this video I'll prove my qualifications, and many of you will agree with points that I make, it's important to not discount the opinions of others and leave yourself open for innovation at all times. Now damage isn't what wins Pokemon games. If damage is what won games, then Pokemon like Ranfuros would be run, and the competitive scene wouldn't have captured the interest of myself or a lot of other players. If we think in terms of Unga Bunga, this move does big damage like many players tend to do, you're destined to fail. Now let's go over some more widely acknowledged Pokemon, because I'm sure that we can all agree that despite having a base 160 attack power, Ramphoros is hot garbage. Now what makes me so high on Garchomp in PCG? Now for those that don't know, PCG is an interesting battle experience. With exclusion of Pokemon abilities and the ability for a Pokemon to get any move of a set type, i.e. Snorlax gets access to extreme speed, Garchomp has the potential to be a very problematic Pokemon. With 600 base stats, Garchomp is an unhinged nightmare for any Pokemon that doesn't outspeed or possess a single icicle. People may discount it as small odds, but with every Snorlax caught, rerolled, and the soon to be millions of Twitch players coming into this game, sets like that are bound to happen, and we're already starting to see it to some extent. Now if you don't want to lose to these types of cancer sets, you need to do what every other mainline Pokemon player does, and that's account for them. Many people in PCG just aren't building correctly. If you're putting a bunch of IV resets into a Weavile or Infernape just to make it faster, and an extreme speed Snorlax is able to get one belly drum off, you lose if you don't have a ghost type. Now you can complain, discourage the use of Snorlax, but at the end of the day, the extreme speed Snorlax user won. Now whether that be a product of luck or proper resource management, he is the better player. Now if Garchomp has access to the move parting shot and can be rotated into freely, it would straight up be a nightmare scenario. If at any point you have an opponent with a Gyarados, you would optimally want to swap your Rotom Wash into it and get the free damage. A Garchomp's presence alone will discourage that thought process. Your advantage off rotation will become a disadvantage if he reads you, and you may go from having a 4 time electrical advantage to staring at a Garchomp which no Pokemon in the game has the ability to freely tank, much less you can't take one ground move and is outsped. But your situation is different. You can just swap to Togekiss, assuming you have it, and the ground dragon won't affect it. Wrong again. You're not against any Joe Schmo Garchomp, you're against a parting shot Garchomp. Garchomp. That gives it access to gain the advantage off rotation no matter how well you play around it. For those that don't know, Parting Shot is a debuffing move, operating similar to Volt Switch and U-Turn. The difference being it sets up the next Pokemon that switches in, and it also allows for an easy sweep depending on your situation. Now for the Garchomp user, there's no thought required. Unga Bunga, I go for Earthquake, Unga Bunga is now the de facto right call. If you're right and it stays in and goes for ice, you kill it. And if you're wrong and it goes into a bird, as long as you outspeed, which you do almost everything because you're Garchomp, you can just debuff and rotate into a burp killer. They kill any mon at any point in time. Cool story. You send out Garchomp and Retribution and rip its face off. Oh, is that a Togue? You get a free debuff off and rinse and repeat. You now have a Cancer unblockable Chomp that can set up other mons like the Extreme Speed Snorlax we mentioned earlier. It will put the fear of God into any Tabu or Dragapult users who aren't willing to tank a Garchomp Earthquake, and even if they are, certainly not two times. Now let me propose a different scenario. Your Garchomp now has Rock Slide. Now let's go to a fantasy world where Rock Slide isn't 90% accurate, and it'll hit Togue almost every time and do half its health. So I'm staring at this ugly ass Rotom Wash. I know he has a Togue, so I use Rock Slide. It doesn't miss because we're pretending it's a reliable move and it does half health. And Garchomp eats a blizzard to its face. To add insult to injury, 11 turns later you end up sending a slow Mon in and Rotom ends up healing back to full health. Now, I'm not saying Rock Slide is a bad move, but if you use Rock Slide, you have to be right and pray to God it doesn't miss. Years from now, if PCG is still around, I think that will be unoptimal because it doesn't matter if you have that move because on a bell curve, you're going to lose to a healer glare part shot Garchomp. The point you should take away from this video is that there are mandatory immunities that your team needs to account for, and how important it is that you manage your resources, allowing you to roll in such a way that it lets you replace any Pokemon in your team solely and over the course of the next couple years without investing into Pokemon that you can no longer use. Here is a list of wickets that you should meet to have a viable team comp, and I hope that the systems in the game are either changed, or anyone who watches this video occupies the top 100 next year.
The formula for a successful team is to have at least one ground type, with a ground type attacking move, a steel type, a normal type, a minimum of one flying type, a ghost type, a mon with special fire coverage, and at least one healing special defense tank, and at least one healing physical defense tank. Any other immunities and Pokemon with priority moves are heavily encouraged, and you will have to prioritize at least one fast revenge killer. There is no one way to build a team, but the easiest and tried and true method of team building is to start with your 567 plus BST mon, and roll for a broken set. After that, you can put pieces of your team together to support a balanced comp, focusing on weaving in immunities and the wickets I talked about earlier. I'll start by talking about the S tier, the 567 plus mons. Dragapult. Dragapult is the most viable mon in the game. It will go first every time with its 142 base speed, making it a premier revenge killer, as well as providing a ghost type immunity for rotation and having access to special fire, covering a potential 3 wickets by itself. There are two main god sets for Dragapult, the first one being in the normal slot having healing, swords dance, workup or glare, with a multitude of physical or special ghost moves, and U-turn. U-turn will function really well dealing a nice rotational chip with its 120 base attack power, and actually outspeeding everything minus another pull or priority. The other god set would be very similar only with healing or will-o'-wisp. This will invalidate Pult's main counter and Snorlax as well as avoid problematic sucker punch users. Kartana. Fuck this Pokemon. As it stands, if properly supported, this mod is unblockable. You need at least a fire coverage, Pult, Volcarona, or Salazzle to beat it with the right set. This Pokemon is one of the reasons I don't take PCG seriously at all. Old Crazy Ninja is one of zero people running this Pokemon properly, and he is very close to a god set. Unless Ninja plays aggressively for no reason at all, you'll always lose to him, and your only chance is if you're running Pokemon that we talked about earlier, and even then it's hard. Supported with multiple healing water mons, you will not be able to win, and the best case you can hope for is to punish the water Pokemon with aggressive reads, but even then, it's just gonna force a rotation back into Kartana if you kill, and even then it will be able to revenge kill you even if you are right, and that's a very high risk play to make in the first place. If you have this Pokemon, you need to invest everything you have into it. The best set is Swords Dance, Horn Leash, Iron Head, and Earthquake. Garchomp. We talked about Garchomp earlier, so we'll keep this abridged. Garchomp will have issues with many Pult users capable of one-shotting them, Ice Coverage Marshadow, Revenge Killing Tabu Cocos, and Ice Shard in general. Still, many of these Pokemon sets are not run, so the upside Garchomp provides still ranks it at rank 3rd overall for me, and 2nd in ease of rolling. God sets include Swords Dance, Glare, and a multitude of special or physical Earth Dragon moves. This mod will be much easier for you to roll if you kept your Earth Power TM. Marshadow is very nice. Like Kartana, it's unblockable, but at least Pult users and Tabu Coco users, which majority of people use, will keep it in check due to its fighting offensive. Ghost immunity, if properly utilized off read options, will let you rotate into a more favorable matchup, and a base 60 power or lower will give Steelix the ability to wall it, and a Togekiss is capable of revenge killing Marshadow at full HP. Even if it has an Ice Punch, ideal set for a Marshadow user would be Healing, Swords Dance, Glare, Close Combat, Thunderous Kick, Aura Sphere, Freeze Dry, Ice Punch, or Thunder Punch. Tabu Coco. Tabu Coco excels mostly as a counter pick. It does really well against most meta picks like Pult and Chomp if it has the right moves, but those moves are hard to roll and individually is the least threatening mon out of any of the ones previously mentioned in S tier, and it can get walled by a lot of A tiers, but I don't believe it's worth giving up a Dragapult spot for it. For Tabus, just like anything else, ideally for your normal type coverage, you would like healing in a stat raising move. Volt Switch is really great for rotational chip if you can get it. Parabolic Charge as well as Draining Kiss are really nice against sustained tanks, but ideally you would like Play Rough or Thunder Punch, and Surf for coverage is amazing against your problematic ground type matchups. Yvaltal is SSS. If Yvaltal is ever unbanned, this game will be in an unplayable state. With access to Mirror Move, Healing, Pursuit, and Sucker Punch, and a very desirable Flying Dark typing, this mon will be the best pseudo bar none. Slacking. Slacking is also an SSS. Pursuit, Sucker Punch, Slacking will be a huge issue with healing. It will also break the game with a similar set, just not to the extent that Yvaltal would. Cresselia is an S tier with healing, but its psychic typing ruins it due to the hyper viability of ghosts. In a vacuum with no ghosts, a calm mindset with healing would scare people to death. From here on out, it's down to personal preference, and I highly recommend that you roll for the following and just use them as placeholders until you get your dream S tier. Your S tier should be the cornerstone that you build your team around. There are a lot of mons that are 567 plus that can work with healing potentially, but you shouldn't be rolling into them. Keep in mind that these are god sets. They don't have the upside that the other Pokemon listed in S tier have are much harder to pull off. I also ran Metagross to rank 2. Dragonite is A tier with healing, S tier with healing and leech seed. Tabu Finny is S tier with healing. Tyranitar is A tier with healing, and S tier with Sucker Punch or Pursuit with healing. Metagross is A tier with healing, and S tier with healing and Ice Shard. Salamence is A tier with healing. 
High Dragon is A tier with Sucker Punch and Flamethrower. Genesect is A tier with healing. Silvali is A tier with healing. Tabulele is A tier with healing. And Guzzlord is A tier with healing. F tier mods not even worth considering are Celebi, Hoopa, Como, Entei, Articuno, Galarian Articuno, and Zerkatry are garbage under the current rule set. If you use them, you're trolling. Under 567 plus. Archeops is an S tier for me. It's an amazing mod, especially if you can get a high damaging special ground such fighting fire coverage. This mod is a good potential revenge killer, a great special fire attacker, and a flying mod all rolled into one. Can possibly hit all three wickets. Arcanine for me is a potential S tier as well. This mod needs healing to work at the highest level, otherwise it's high B. With the mono changes, it will be harder to roll, but it's still an amazing mod. Volcarona is almost S tier. This mod is S tier as long as the opponent doesn't have Accelerock. A Rhyperion general will absolutely ruin this mod as a revenge killer, but with Accelerock, the Quiver Dance, God Set can't even work. I wouldn't roll into this mod because even if you get Secret Sword and Quiver Dance, it's just gonna die at Accelerock users, and that's too much of a liability for me. Tokikiss is SS tier. This mod is a fake pseudo legendary. It can kill Dragapults, Marshadows, and absolutely fuck Garchomps. With additional water coverage, it doesn't even need to fear many of its counters due to its nice bulk and base 120 special attack. It also provides flying and fairy immunities, and it's why I consider it a secret pseudo. With healing, Dazzling Gleam, and Origin Pulse, it can do great damage to high level teams. Gyarados is also an SS tier. This mod is not only a hard hitting physical mod with amazing special and physical bulk, it also fucks Vulk and a healthy one can kill Dragapults and Garchomps with triple axle and one attack. Additionally, as long as a Marshadow doesn't have electric or freeze dry coverage, it kills Marshadows as well too. A healing one can be your special defense tank as well as your flying immunity, and it has potential as a revenge killer with Aqua Jet. Remember, if you choose to use this as your only special defense tank, it becomes a liability if the opponent has freeze dry. So a second special tank would greatly be encouraged in that situation. The only triple S in my mind is Godlax. If you build a team around it, it's actually a 567 plus BSD mod. With the new stupid mono changes, the already broken Snorlax received a huge buff. But before, even if you rolled the perfect set, you would still be worried about getting walled by rock and steel types, but not anymore. With access to both fighting and dark coverages, not only is it more likely that your healing set will have a ghost answer, but it may even possess fighting coverage as well. The odds of rolling healing may have gone down, but the likelihood of getting a competitive Snorlax has drastically increased. As well, opponents are no longer able to play around ghosts if you show fighting coverage due to uncertainty. Disregard everything I have said and consider only the fact that it has 160 base HP, 110 base attack, and 110 special defense. When Snorlax has healing, it beats Aura Sphere Togues, and I fear the state of the game in a couple of months. If you don't adjust your team for one of these, you are now playing at a disadvantage. For me, Kingdra is A tier with healing. With healing scald, it's one of the two things that can shut down a Snorlax. For that alone and its four times resistance to fire, it deserves A tier. Another A tier is Melodic. This is a very good special tank and received a buff after the mono changes. If it has healing and freeze dry, I'd say it's an S tier. Electivire is B tier. The mono changes made it a little viable, but I wouldn't roll into it. If it has Volt Switch, I could see someone running it if ground starts to get less used or if it has special grass coverage. Magmortar is another B tier. It got a slight buff with the mono changes and will always be usable to deal with steel types. Put this on your team if you need a special fire and have no other options. Labrys is an A tier. Labrys is good with healing, having some good bulk to it, and it has good odds at freeze dry. Solid mon. Crobat. Crobat is a great mon, but steel is just too good and auto walls it. You can run it if it has special fighting coverage and it can catch people off guard and open the game up for you with its poison typing. Special fighting would be needed for this mon to work. A tier is Magnezone. Magnezone is a very good mon. If you can roll healing, it can make a case for S tier, but the meta really doesn't favor this Pokemon due to Ferrothorn being as good as it is, and every competent trainer having a ground mon. Probably the best mon that can't be played because other mons in the meta currently counter it. Rhyperior is a potential SS tier. This is the most underrated mon in the game. If you're going to attach value to Slazzle, Volcarona, and Talonflame, you can do the same for Rhyperior. This mon is insanely hard to roll, but if it gets a god set, it will ruin Snorlaxes and Exodrills and a lot of other heavily valued mons while having one of the best hard hitting prios in the game and being an amazing revenge killer as well as a defensive tank. If the perfect set for this mon is rolled, it will be an SS tier just a step below Snorlax and Togekiss. Rotom Heat is A tier. Get special fire and a decent electric move, and it'll be hard to block if you can keep it against the right targets. Rotom Frost is S tier. If you can get strong special water coverage, decent special ice coverage, and electric coverage with pain split or healing, this mon can be a menace in the current meta. Rotom Fan is A tier. There are better flying options, but this one can work. Main issue is a lot of Pokemon in the current meta will ruin it. Rotom Wash is an easier to roll Rotom Frost with better typing. This mon is also an S tier.
Rotom Mo is an S tier. It can work really well, but it needs to pull special ground. Kling Klang is an A tier. Will work really well with healing or pain split and ground coverage. Shandy is an SS tier. Its 145 special and ghost immunity makes it extremely hard to deal with, as well as it invalidates every mono fighting type Pokemon that can ever exist, including Infernapes. If they don't have any electrical coverage, even when attacking Watermons off rotation, high base power fire can do half health. If you choose to run Shandy, it's imperative that you make it as fast as possible so it can outspeed most of its meta peers. Its god set would be Pain Split, Flamethrower, Moongeist Beam, and Quiver Dance. Obstagoon is A tier. Its typing is really good and has decent attack, speed, and HP and defense. This mon falls victim to being a jack of all trades and an ace of none. If you can get Pursuit and Healing, it's an S tier. Crocodile is an A tier. If you can get Pursuit and Earthquake and good grass coverage like Leaf Blade, this mon will be S and is capable of being run at the highest level. Gardevoir is an A tier. It carries with it a 125 base special attack and an above average speed and it makes a good fairy attacker. This mon loses in every regard to Togekiss, but it can be a placeholder until you get one. Glade is a B tier for me. There are just too many mons that do exactly what Glade wants to do, but better. Delmize is an S tier with healing. Its 131 attack is no joke, and its ghost immunity allows it to force a hard matchup off rotation, and at minimum get a heal or big chunk off whatever switches in. If you can get healing and earth coverage, this mon can be considered an SS mon. Aerodactyl is an A tier. Aerodactyl is one of the fastest mons in the game and is good at revenge killing glass cannons. You will need a high damage physical earth coverage move for it to stand a chance at working, as most mons can simply take damage and take it out the same turn. Roserade is an A tier with special ground. I can see it being an issue for a lot of teams if someone is able to get that coverage. Yanmega is an A tier in the exact same situation as Roserade, but with flying type immunity for rotation. If it wasn't for this mon instantly dying to Accelerock, it would have amazing potential as an S tier sweeper set. I can see someone using this mon at the highest level if they manage to get earth power coverage. Gigalanth can be considered an SS tier. It's simply a degraded Rhyperior, so if someone manages to get Accelerock in healing and ground coverage, this mon will ruin lives. Electros is a B tier. I can see it punishing new players with parabolic charge, but has little to no potential in higher MMR. Cragonal can be considered an S tier. With healing and freeze dry, it can be a hilarious counter to the meta. In most cases, a freeze dry on a Gyarados will kill. Additionally, other special water mons without any good physical attack will just be meat on the cutting board for it. With 105 base speed and access to water coverage, it could terrorize certain comp sets I've seen. By all means, never roll this mon, but if anyone is able to get healing, freeze dry, origin pulse, and nature's madness, it will be very hard to go against. Avalog can be considered an SS tier if you properly support it. Ice Steelix will hit hard with 117 attack and be a physical attacker's worst nightmare with 95 HP and 184 defense. If this mon is paired with a Snorlax, it can ruin lives. Remember, healing is extremely mandatory to get maximum effectiveness out of this mon. Polyrath is B tier. This mon has good typing, but its stats are too low due to its extreme balance. There's no reason to ever use this mon. Steelix is a potential triple S mon. Keep in mind, Steelix is borderline impossible to roll unless you kept your earth power. RTM. And Ground and Steel is one of the best defensive typings one could ask for, and a 200 defense puts even Arceus to shame. As a Steelix user myself, if the water attack is physical and less than 60 base power, I will stay in and brawl it out, because it won't even do half my HP. Physical Umbreon, Drapion, Obstagoon, Non-Water Weavile, Non-Ground Coverage Magnezone, and Non-Special Fire Dragapults are invalidated and allow me to completely dominate them as Pokemon. For Steelix to work, you need at least healing, a ground coverage move, and a strong steel attack. For maximum use, you want to get grass or rock coverage as well. Good luck to all the big brain individuals who start investing in this lottery ticket. Weavile in the current meta can be considered S tier. Very few people choose to run its counter and it can trap a Dragapult with Pursuit or force a swap with Sucker Punch. I choose not to invest into it because once people start running correct walls, this mon will be extremely hard to pull off at the highest level. Gliscor is an S tier. If someone manages to get a healing set with strong ground and rock coverage, this mon could be considered a double S tier. Arguably the best typing to ever exist and 95 speed, 95 attack with great bulk will cause fear into anyone if you can properly avoid ice. Dark Zorark is B tier. Pretty self-explanatory, 105 attack, 120 special, and 105 speed if used correctly can cause issues for players. It has no upside potential and has no bulk if properly walled, and due to its typing it's not that hard to do. Hisoian Zorark is an S tier. It has very similar stats with 125 special and 110 speed, but what sets it apart is it has arguably the best typing in the game with Ghost and Normal. If a high level player plays aggressive with it, it can chase off Dragapults and do big chip damage in doing so. Ghost having immunity to ghost gives it little to no weaknesses, and all I can say is I'm thankful that this mon is as squishy as it is. Mandy Buzz is a potential S tier with healing. If you saved your foul play TM and need a nice flying immunity so you don't have to worry about the Marshadow Scourge, Mandy Buzz may be able to fit your niche. 110 HP, 105 defense, and 
75 special and a respectable AD speed makes this mod a very good off tank slash dragapult counter. Colossal is a potential S tier with healing. On paper, its stats are amazing, but it's very difficult to pull off when you consider its two four times weaknesses are ground and water, which are arguably the best offensive typings in the game. In order for me to even consider using it at the highest level, it would need to have special fire, accelerock, healing, and ground. Sandaconda can be considered A tier with healing and a strong ground move. It can be used as a very degraded physical wall for newer players. Cursola is a B tier. It has the nicest stat distribution out of any of the Pokemon I've previously put in B tier, but the fact that it's extremely slow and can be one tapped by many of the Pokemon used in the current meta makes it a joke. Overquill is an A tier. It's a lot less impressive than many of the Pokemon that fit the same role as it, but I could see it working if someone gets the right set. Dark types in this meta with Pursuit or Sucker Punch are just strong in general. Exadrill is a very solid S tier. Again, Ground Steel is arguably the best defensive typing in the game, and 88 speed and 130 attack is no joke either. An Exo with rock coverage with perfect speed and speed nature and or triple axle is an SS tier for me. Pyroar is an S tier for me. 109 special attack with ghost immunity due to its normal fire typing paired with its 106 speed this mod no joke. As much as I regret telling you this, with access to Dark Pulse, it can serve as the perfect counter to my Shandy as well as a creative answer to dealing with the pulse. Sir Farfetch'd is B tier. All mono fighting types struggle with this meta and until major changes happen, they will remain bad. 130 attack is nice though. Nidoqueen is B tier as well and suffers from completely balanced stats. Its typing is interesting however. Nidoking is B tier for the same reasons as Nidoqueen. Ninetales is the first 100 speed special fire to fall to B tier. Its overall stats are just too low. I'm not going to rank Shuckle because I think it can work if it gets the right set and it's just down to execution. Obviously it needs healing, but what if it got healing, infestation, and foul play? At that point, Shuckle has an argument for S tier. Honchcrow is A tier if it can pull Sucker Punch. Conkeldur is a hard A tier with the potential to be an S S tier. 140 attack is no joke and it's defensively got some bulk. In a one on one situation versus a pull with Ice Punch, it will win, but the situation is hard to set up, especially with the Marshadows and Gyarados as I see every game. If one manages to roll Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, and Drain Punch, it's a clear SS for me. Additionally, swapping into a 140 attack Ice Punch is no easy feat. Dracovich is B tier for me. There are so many better options that do exactly what Dracovich wants to do, and its stats are just too evenly distributed. Use Kingdra instead. Toxtricity is a clear C tier. Its stats are too low and its typing is awful. Alkazam is A tier. Alkazam is a premier glass cannon. With 135 special attack and 120 speed, it can act very well as a revenge killer. As much as I love the meme of this Pokemon, it is a joke as Dragapult outspeeds it anyway. Gengar is also an A tier. In terms of damage, it's a worse version of Alakazam and it would lose to it if it doesn't have Shadow Sneak, which is unviable anyway. The ghost typing is nice, but again, it's just going to get one shot by Dragapult or Marshadow if it's ever used to kill something. Scyther is a B tier. It's way worse than Yan Mega, sharing all the same weaknesses while having none of the upside potential. For the same reasons as Cursola, Polchigeist is a joke B tier. Politoed is a C tier. Not only is it a 500 BST mono water, but the stats are completely spread out, making it not good at anything. Scissor is a potential A tier with healing. If you can get healing, U-turn, leech life, and ground, I'd say it qualifies as an S tier. Leafani is a C tier. Like my mod Loria, it sucks. Dawnfan is an A tier with healing and a strong ground move. I have the Wailord God set, and it's not even good. Even at its best, it's a B tier. Aegis Slash Blade is hot garbage. Just don't use it. Aegis Slash Shield with Nightshade and healing is an S tier mon. Cloyster sucks. Cloyster sucks. Halucha is a B tier. I'm not very high on Halucha. 118 speed is nice, but 92 attack just isn't going to be enough to take out anything that matters. And it has so many weaknesses, it's hard for me to remain interested. Vikavolt is hot garbage. Beware without the ability Fluffy is a joke. There are many mons that do exactly what it wants to do, but better. Depending on the miner, some of them are pretty good. Indigo has 120 speed, 100 attack, and 100 special attack allowing it to be a potential A tier. Mr. Rhyme is C tier. This mod is hot garbage, do not use it. Talonflame is A tier. This is only due to its 126 speed and its fire flying typing. Drifloom has good typing, but its overall BST just takes it out of the equation. Golem is A tier with Accelerock, healing, and ground coverage. Rampharos is the ultimate Accelerocker with 165 base attack. There's a case for it being A tier. Excavalier has the potential to be S tier. Having bug makes it more likely to roll healing and not a bit of its BST is wasted, sporting an impressive 135 base attack. I've seen a U-turn set already run at the highest level, and I will say it's very annoying to deal with. This mon can be an okay healing defensive tank, and it's very hard for an opponent to swap a fire mon in if you manage to roll a strong ground coverage. Durable Ant can be considered an S tier. With Pain Split, ground coverage, and U-turn, Durant would be very gross. With 109 attack, 109 speed, and 112 defense, 
defense, it having pain split would make it very reliable and a pain to deal with. In general, remember low HP and good defensive stats and high speed are always prime pain split candidates. Thoro is an amazing mon, only limited by the fact that it's mono fighting. Every stat is where it needs to be with 120 HP, 100 attack, and a respectable 85 special and physical defense. This mon is yet another potential S tier with healing, physical electric, and physical ice. I doubt anyone ever gets a god set for this, but if someone does, it'll be an effective brawler due to most mons being unable to one-shot it. Most people already know Ferrothorn is getting an SS. Grass Steel is one of the best typings in PCG, and the coverage options Fera gets with the two types are pretty insane. Porygon Z. This mon would be very hard to deal with if someone managed to to pull a strong special dark move and healing. The mono changes are extremely helpful to this mon in particular, and we may see these start coming out. Drowadon is an S tier. This mon is deceptively fast with an 85 base speed and very good defensive bulk, but its value comes from its typing. This is a very hard to roll mon, but if you can get special fire coverage, this mon is an SS and has a lot of potential. It can be your defense tank, special fire, and steel all rolled into one. Agron is a potential A tier. I would not roll an Agron as it's very hard to do, but with Accelerock, I would put it as an A tier. If you can pull heal healing, ground, accelerock, there is a case to be made that this is an S tier mon. Walrun is also an A tier. It is a very solid mon that is just a worse version of Lapras. If you can get healing and freeze dry, it will be an issue for a lot of meta teams. Mamoswine is also a low S tier. It doesn't have a lot of bulk, but it more than makes up for it with power. This mon is fairly easy to roll, but the majority of players would prefer extra drill due to its superior speed and typing, and that's why this mon doesn't see much use. Ursa Luna is a triple S tier, with 130 HP, 140 attack, good special and defensive bulk, ground and normal typing, this mon is the full package. If you can get pursuit on this mon, you can force a drag pull into killing situations and even have ground type immunity rotations to force scary swap -ins or ground stab. This new mon will be enough Another factor ruining mag zones. My ideal set would be healing, EQ, crush claw, and extreme speed, and pursuit or leech seed. For this mod to be viable in higher MMR, it needs healing. Blissey is a B tier with healing. In the mainline games, it's good due to its move pool, but here it can't get toxic or seismic toss reliably. If you manage to pull a healing one, you can substitute it as a special defense tank as you roll for something better. Nagaganol is a double S tier. Use this vice any other special fire option with the exception of Shandy. If you can get something as simple as Sludge Flamethrower, you can take full advantage of your 127 special and 121 speed and be an unblockable status monster. No one with half a brain cell is going to swap into a steel type to resist the poison and very few poison types are even capable of being run. This mod is an amazing revenge killer, but as a swap in option, it requires love and to be properly set up as its bulk leaves a lot to be desired. It is mandatory that this mod gets special fire coverage for high level play. An ideal set would be Glare, Draco Meteor, Sludge Wave, and Flamethrower. Vanillix is a C tier, and it's not even worth talking about. Just don't use it. Noivern is a low S tier. This is the poor man's Nagaginal, and all it needs is special fire coverage to work. It's nice because it gives you a flying swap in, but that alone isn't cutting it. 97 special is kind of nice, but you generally want more. Ironically, where this mon would excel is as a Nagaginal counter, with 125 base speed edging it out. An ideal set would be Glare, Draco Meteor, Aerial Blast, and Flamethrower. Executor and Lowen Executor are total garbage, don't even bother using them. Glissopod is a double S. 125 attack, 140 defense, and good special defense, but it has a very low health pool. Glissopod is one of the best anti-tank pain splitters in the game. It's not quite good enough to be your healing physical wall, but it has a very strong niche as a perfect wall counter. This mod is very hard to pull off, but for those who can incorporate it properly, it will be a menace. My ideal set would be Pain Split, Aqua Jet, Leech Life, and EQ. Basca Legion is a B tier. It would be amazing if it had just two more speed. Its typing would be insane for offensive use, but it's just too slow. An 82 speed would make it an S tier for me, but everything goes out the window because of its lack of speed and bulk. Its stats are just too balanced. Flareon is a B tier and is the least aesthetically pleasing EV evolution in the game. If you have no other option, you can throw this on your team if you need a special fire attacker. It's primarily a physical attacker and it doesn't have much going for it. Although beautiful, Meganium is a C tier. It fucking sucks for competitive use. Espeon is an A tier. 130 special and 110 speed has some potential. Umbreon is also an S tier. Before, the mon was borderline impossible to roll, but now after having a foul play TM, it's fairly easy to get a top percentage Umbreon. It just needs healing to work 
and its god said would be healing, foul play, toxic threat, and fiery wrath. Lucario is an A tier. It has 115 special attack, and you can use it if you manage to roll special fire or fighting coverage. It will outspeed a lot of things, and be a good answer to very problematic Pokemon. The only issue is it will be hard to roll in most teams due to its multiple weaknesses and its inability to rotate in. Hippowdon is an A tier. With healing, it can be your defensive tank, but it pales in comparison to most of your other defensive wall options. Leafeon is B tier. Its stats are all over the place, and it doesn't have much upside potential. Glaceon is B tier as well, and it's too slow to take advantage of its 130 special attack. Luxray is C tier. Just don't fucking use this mod. Aurorus is also C tier. Its stats have no idea what it's doing, and its typing gives it no shot at tanking anything. Starmine is an A tier. It can work as a fast special attacker, but that's about the extent of it. Very little upside with this mod. I will not evaluate Dusknoir or Propass. I feel they can work, but there's so much uncertainty and factors going against them. Flygon is an A tier. It can use its okay special attack to have special fire, and its typing is very nice if you avoid ice. Respectable 100 attack and 100 speed. Siglyph is a weak A tier. If you're starting out or get really good moves on this mod, it can be your flying special attacker, with 103 special attack and 97 speed. There are many fast special attackers that overshadow this mod, but if you can get the right set and the right coverages on it, it's very usable. Corviknight and Skarmory. Both are potential S tiers, but unless Skarmory has pain split, Corvi is the better option. Both require healing to work at the highest level, and if you can roll healing Nightshade, they have little to no counterplay if used correctly. Toxapex is a solid S tier. It's hard to roll, but with 152 defense and 142 special defense and its superior typing, it puts itself in a situation where you kind of have to take the poison. The god set for this mod would be pain split, scald, toxic, and heal order. Once the ground meta stops keeping this Pokemon in check, we might see more people using it. Pangaroo will not be rated. I really like the typing, and a 124 attack is really nice, but the rest of its stats leave a lot to be desired. I've seen someone pull off this mon due to it having Thunderous Kick, but I believe it's more about Thunderous Kick being such a good move, and it's dark typing causing fear for Ghost to not want to switch in. Ice and Fire Darmanitan are both strong A tiers. 95 speed is a bit low for Revenge Killer, but 140 attack is something no one wants to freely tank. If you can put these mons into a situation where they can outspeed or get rotational damage off, its gross effectiveness would easily make it an S tier. Swamper and Seismic Toad have a great amount of potential. Seismic Toad isn't as good for those who choose to take the time to invest into a Swamper, but if you can roll a healing set on either and have nice ground coverage, they will make great offensive off tanks. Greta Ninja shows a lot of promise. Again, dark types are extremely strong in the current meta, and a Greta Ninja that rolls parting shot will be nightmare fuel. The last Pokemon I will be reviewing is Bisharp. Dark and Steel Typing are both very nice, but with the current Marshadow Scourge, this mon will be kept in the ground. 125 attack and 100 defense leaves it in a usable state with ground coverage, so I'll give it a very dangerous low S tier rating. Cooperaja, Renicus, Omastar, Kabutops, Cradilly, Bastijon, Floatzel, Miss Magius, Alacream, Dracolidge, Victory Bell, Weezing, Gothity, Pazamine, Raichu, Goldpeed, Dur Dragon, Tukinon, Comfy, Turtonator, Flapple, Appleton, Heatmore, Malamar, Ludicolo, Whimsicott, Lilaginth, Oricoco, and Mimikyu are just not even worth talking about. Make sure to use them as trade fodder. I'm gonna be honest. Originally, I wasn't planning on including the proper way to roll a Pokemon in PCG. But after a close high-ranking friend of mine explained that he chooses to sell his full resets, I felt this would be very necessary. Nature is extremely important for your competitive mods. The easiest way to conceptualize nature is that if your Pokemon has 100 attack and 100 speed, it will turn a Pokemon to 90 attack and 110 speed. Of course, there is more math than that, but for theory concerns, it's close enough. What nature you want is Pokemon dependent, but in general, if you have a non-mixed attacker, you want a negative version of whatever attack type it doesn't use. What that means is the stat you want decreased will be blue. As for IV they also aren't hard to conceptualize. If you have a stat of 90 that is perfect, that stat is exactly 90. Where it gets math is where you have a fantastic or lower stat. You now have a percent range of that 90. A fantastic could be 89 or 88, but all you need to know is that if your opponent has perfect speed with a speed nature and you have an 89 value that doesn't round up at level 50, you will always be outsped. And depending on your team composition, you may want to opt for an attack nature so you can guarantee that kill on Mars Shadows and just avoid the mirror match. As for moves, they're the single most important thing in PCG. If your IVs in nature are bad, but you know Draco Meteor, your output will be higher than a traditional Dragon Pulse. A 60 base power move will do half the damage output of a 120 base power move of the same type in stat usage. This also leads to the idea of damage rolls and stab bonuses. For damage rolls, it's simple. If you use a move, it can be a maximum of 10% more or less than the move you just used. And the lower your Pokemon's hit points, the more the likelihood of a higher roll goes up. A very important skill as a battler is to understand your own Pokemon's damage output, and how high the likelihood of the next 
move killing is. Knowing that a Pokemon will kill if it does 8% less damage than the previously used move, or 5% if your Pokemon is already at low health, is an amazing skill to develop for yourself. PCG places even more emphasis on this due to the large variations and potential stats that Pokemon are often battling with. This leaves us with just Stab. Stab is same type as user bonus. Basically, if a fire type uses a fire type move, it gets 1.5 times damage or 50% increase in damage. So using a ghost or fire 80 base damage attack will out damage a 90 base poison move from a shandy. Aside from defense fishing, this is one of the reasons you see me go for crush claw with snorlax versus steel, even though faint attack is neutral. The damage is comparable, and one might have the side effect of dropping the opposing Pokemon's defense. Cost efficiency. My friend who told me he uses his battle coins to redeem full resets and then exchanges said resets into Pokeyen so that he can buy more discs may qualify as mentally disabled. If you are doing something similar for the love of God stop. Full resets were put into the game so that newer players stand a chance and aside from the one time they did an item sale it has been the only thing to date this plutocracy of a game has done to not choke the life out of new people joining the community. When you use a full reset it gives you the value of a 10,000 Pokeyen IV reset, a 7,500 mood mint, and a 5,000 Pokeyen move disc. You're paying 9,000 Pokeyen for a 22,500 Pokeyen value. If you're a new player and you want to be competitive with the rest of us, you need to be patient to stand a chance. You're competing with the likes of Evil Gamer who nets the max Pokeyen every day. If you're not ultra efficient and use every resource at your disposal, it is already too late. My first year and some change playing this game, I used all my resources throwing Pokeballs at everything that spawned. This game for me was just a shiny hunting app because I didn't want to deal with its severe balancing issues. With my team of grass coverage Dragonite, I was barely able to scratch the top 80 and collectively saying fuck this game for multiple seasons. It wasn't until I was flamed for my opinion on the destructive nature of the flamethrower TM and TM rewards in general that I consulted my friends Casual QT and Hispanic Chad on what Pokemon are extremely strong in the current meta and theorycrafted my current team. This was all for the purposes of proving my fragile ego right and how much a flamethrower TM can break the game if used correctly. If it wasn't for full resets and the fact that I often streamed for 16 hours a day, I wouldn't have stood a chance at making the climb in half a season. It is not worth investing into suboptimal Pokemon. If you have one Dragapult, it's better to keep it on the back burner, avoid rank, and hit it with full reset after full reset until you get an ideal set of IVs or moves. I've seen many people spend hundreds of thousands of Pokeyen on Pokemon they'd no longer even use, or Pokemon they are trying out. Stop this shit. I've invested under a million and have more than 11 comp Snorlaxes that I've only dropped full resets into. And I know for some that have gone against said Snorlaxes, that might trigger you. The formula for efficient rolling is as follows. Theorycraft a team that hits all the wickets I described earlier in the video. Buy full resets for any Pokemon that I've given an S rating for that you want on your team. Death roll until you get amazing IVs or a great move set. Spend money on discs or IV resets to fix the aspect of the Pokemon that isn't perfect. Add nature if it's at the detriment of your Pokemon. It's okay to roll other Pokemon without fixing nature if you want to get started earlier. Repeat slash reevaluate if you got a set that you didn't expect and make team adjustments. Remember, PCG is a video game, and if you don't have fun with it, then don't play it. If you play it casually and enjoy it, that's awesome. Okay, that about wraps things up. Feel free to join Minish Discord and follow me on Twitch if you have any questions, and please don't subscribe so there's no pressure on me to ever put out another video. Johnny Sins here. Thanks for subscribing to Minish, who's a much better streamer than Scotter the Otter.